Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have another challenging problem out of an entry test around the world. In this case, JE Advanced. It's a physics problem dealing with mechanics and specifically with two harmonic oscillators. So we have two independent harmonic oscillators with equal mass. They're oscillating about the origin with angular frequencies omega 1 and omega 2. They tell us that the ratio A over B equals N squared and A over R equals N find the correct equations and they give us four equations and it could be one or four or anything in between two or three that are correct so which of these equations are correct well notice they gave us a graph of the two oscillators here we can see on the horizontal axis its distance away from the origin so the maximum displacement here would be a and here we have on the vertical axis the momentum and the maximum momentum is equal to b here we have the oscillator that has maximum displacement r and maximum momentum equal to r as well r is just a constant so how do we figure that out well first of all with harmonic oscillators we have the maximum potential energy so we can write that e1 and here we have e1 which is the total energy of this system e2 is the total energy of that system so we can say that e1 is equal to one half k1 because each would have a spring constant and this would be k1 times and that would be the maximum displacement squared so in this case that would be a squared as far as the second harmonic oscillator is concerned we have e2 is equal to one half k2 times r squared because that's the maximum displacement we can also figure out the maximum energy in terms of the kinetic energy remember that e1 can also be written as one half mv max and that would be squared and that would be of the first oscillator and here we have e2 would be equal to one half mv2 max i guess i can write it as v1 max like that squared now of course they didn't give us the velocity they gave us the momentum and the relationship with velocity and momentum is that momentum is equal to m times v which means that v is equal to p over m so we can replace v by p over m and p is given so we have e1 which is equal to one half times the mass v1 squared that would be p squared over m squared and that would be b for the maximum magnitude of momentum divided by m squared and we have e2 as far as kinetic energy is one half m times v2 max that would be p2 which is r squared over m squared and in either case this m cancels out that m and this m cancels out that m all right so now that's at least the maximum potential energy of the first system the maximum potential energy of the second system the maximum kinetic energy of the first system and the maximum kinetic energy of the second system we also should know that the omega is equal to the square root of k over m which means that omega 1 would be k1 over m and omega 2 would be equal to the square root of k2 over m and so then we can see we can find the relationship between those two we can say that omega 1 over omega 2 would be equal to the square root of k1 over m divided by the square root of k2 over m and then if the m's cancel out and we square both sides we can then say that omega 1 squared over omega 2 squared is equal to k1 over k2 all right so now we have to somehow relate this To these two equations and to those two equations and we should be able to figure out which of those equations represent correct values or correct relationships hmm also keep in mind that they gave this as well so, so one thing we could do is we could go ahead and relate the kinetic energy to the potential energy and see if that gets us anywhere so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say we can say that e1 divided by e2 can be written as and I'm going to write it like this because I can say e1 is one half k1 a squared divided by e2 which is 
1 half k2 r squared and that of course would be equal to this that would be equal to 1 half b squared over m divided by 1 half r squared over m so we have some nice relationships now we can simplify those by getting rid of all the one halves and the one over and the over m and so essentially what we can say here is that k1 a squared over k2 r squared is equal to b squared over r squared We can now come up with a relationship. Notice that r squared is the denominator on both, in the denominator on both sides, so that can go, and this becomes 1. We can now write that k1 over k2 is equal to b squared over a squared. And the reason I did that was I, I took a peek over here, and notice I can relate k1, k2, omega1, omega2, like this. Okay, And notice that b squared over a squared can be written as 1 over, let's see here, b squared over a squared. All right. Now I'm taking a peek over here. Notice I should be able to get rid of over m, and I should also be able to write it as omega 1 over omega 2 is equal to the square root of k1 divided by the square root of k2. So I take the square root of both sides, because then I want to relate it to this. Because I'm looking over here and I see omega 2 over omega 1 equals n squared. There might be something there, or omega 1 omega squared equals n squared. There's some relationship there that I want to take advantage of. So here what I can do is I can take the square root of both sides. So take the square root of this, take the square root of that. And so this is equal to omega 1 over omega 2, and this would be equal to b over a. Now come over here, a over b equals n squared, so this is equal to 1 over n squared. Now, either this equation is true or this equation is true, so let me see here. I can take the inverse of that, I could write omega 2 over omega 1 is equal to n squared, and that is equal to answer B. So it looks like answer B is one of the correct answers. All right, so now I still need to relate the energies to the omegas. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, so notice I have A squared over R squared, and A over R is N. So I'm going to take this equation right here, and I can write that E1 over E2 is equal to K1 over K2, so that would be K1 A squared over K2 R squared, and so this would be N squared. And K1 over K2 can be related to, K1 over K2 can be related to omega 1 squared, omega 2 squared. So let's try that. So E1 over E2 is equal to K1 over K2 would be omega sub 1 squared divided by omega sub 2 squared and A squared over R squared is equal to N squared. But notice that N squared is omega 2 over omega 1. So then we could write E1 over E2 is equal to omega 1 squared over omega 2 squared and N squared can be written as omega 2 over omega 1, which means that this cancels out one of those, and this cancels out one of those, and then I want to put in the right format, either D or A is correct. But let's see, E1 over E1 over E2, so E1 divided by omega 1, so if I move this across and this across there, I get E1 over omega 1 is equal to E2 over omega 2, and that looks like it's answer D, answer D, so it looks like answer B and answer D are the two correct equations because they give me the correct relationship here and there. Wow, that was kind of complicated, and again, you don't have a lot of time to work this out, but the key is to realize we're dealing with harmonic oscillators, we know that the total energy can be expressed in terms of the potential energy or the kinetic energy. 
Since they gave us momentum instead of velocity, we convert from momentum to velocity and replace p by what the velocity is equal to, or the v what the velocity is equal to in terms of momentum. And then we also realize the relationship between omega and k. We realize that omega is equal to the square root of k over m. Since m is the same for both oscillators, we can eliminate that by taking the ratio and then it's just manipulating algebraically until we find one of the correct answers, and that is how it's done. Does that say there could be more than one answer? Yes. The possibility is that it could be anywhere from one to four correct answers. For all the tests? For this particular question. Now, it turns out that there's a variety of questions and answers in the JE advanced test. In some cases, they tell you that it could be any one of the answers could be correct or any combination of the answers could be correct. So in this case, you don't know if it's one, two, three, or four correct answers. However, you can see that these are opposite of one another, so this, these two cannot be correct at the same time, and these two cannot be correct at the same time. So it, in this point, you realize it's either only two potentially correct answers that you can get. Yeah, that does make it more challenging when you don't, it's not just one answer, it could be any combination of answers that makes it even more challenging.